So this is yarn that I've spun. It's been washed, it's dry, and I now have to mark this. And what that involves is counting out each strand to get the length and creating a label and then labeling it and then putting it in the Etsy shop. But that's where that stands. All right, so here's some fleeces that I have washed that are in line to be flick carded. This is Genoa. She's a great cat mugget. And I'm gonna be flicking this in the longer lengths I'm gonna make bats with and then the shorter bits I'm gonna spin. She kind of sheared inconsistently. Another you that I am definitely gonna rue next year. So that's that, she's a great cat mugget. And then I'm also working on Sansa, which is, a, she's a black you and she sheared kind of short this year definitely a growing candidate i'm sounding like a broken record here but i've gotten really nice staple lengths from her before so if she does not have a short staple this was really just to where she was on the rise so i'll be carding and spinning that then i've got bins of flick locks down here that i just want to show quickly here's lakshmi no it isn't lakshmi it's yuki and these locks are unbelievable. They're so soft and they're just like so light. There's hardly anything to them. They're just like beautiful clouds. So that is Yuki. This is gonna be um, put on the drum carter and made into bats for some very, very lucky spinner to play with. And it's a fawn, it looks white, but there's actually, you can see some of the darker parts of the staple. And I'm also working on O'Brien. And O'Brien this year, like I said, she's given me a nice mix of light and dark colors so this is going to be just a pretty variegated yarn i'm not gonna there's not enough variation to do a grade gradient there so it'll be just a nice variegated up here is yuki um the other thing about yuki is i did rue this fleece so it's a little bit unorganized but i just sort of straightened it out down here and i'm able to grab locks to card uh, so I'm working on that, this right now. This is actively being worked. Then there's still some O'Brien left. Actually, there's so much hay in here, and I'll tell you why. I don't have a sheep stand yet. I'm getting one. Yuki, I was working on her fleece in the little foyer area of the barn when I was brewing her. So she got lots of hay and stuff, which is the only reason why I didn't sell this as a raw fleece. She just had a lot of, you know, bits and stuff. It's just not up to my standard. This is just half of her fleece. The other half is still waiting for washing, which I'll get to that soon. And then I've got O'Brien here. It, I'm also spinning her up. She has short and long bits, but I've opted to spin the whole thing. Interesting with O'Brien, this is the darker portion, but she had some really light wool. Last year she was really dark, and this year she's lightened up which is, I don't know what that is about, but it makes for some really pretty, pretty yarn. So this is yarn I have to wash, and I keep my yarn on a music stand, and I have this music stand right next to me when I'm spinning, so I'll put my phone here to watch whatever thing has caught my interest at the time. Right now I'm really into a lot of YouTube channels, watching about how to vlog and also um, I'm going to be switching over to Shopify from Etsy so I'm watching a lot of videos about the software offered by Shopify and stuff that'll be coming up pretty soon anyway so these are O'Brien's skeins and 10 mini skeins because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind these up and put them in my sheep hide kits it takes nine different colors to make a sheep hide kit. I think I have three more to go for those. And then this is the skein that's left after I did the 10. The balance of O'Brien from the skirting table is gonna be made into another skein. And this is my long draw skein. So pretty loopy, but I'll wash it and we'll see what it does. And um, I'll tell you, it's real full feeling like these feel very elegant and refined and this just feels like that crazy aunt that you love when she comes over because you never know what the heck she's gonna do 
This is the one that's very well behaved, but still bouncy. All right, so that's the stuff I've got to, I still have to wash these. I'll be doing that soon. So this is something I'm working on, which is coming up with a list of sheep to sell so that we can get our flock to the correct size. We've got, um, we have a limit in terms of size of the barn and our capacity as far as how many sheep we should have out there. And we're over the limit now, which always happens because of lambing. And it's not a big, big problem. But, um, so what we have to do is we have to figure out who we're willing to put on a sales list. And I keep an index card for every ewe and ram in the flock, and I use it all different times of the year. Um, we'll use it for putting breeding groups together and just all sorts of stuff. It's just handy. So I'm using it right now for the list creation. <clears throat> and the way it's organized is I've got sorted by color. So the first column are all the morets or the browns, and the second column are the blacks. The third column are the grays, and all of our grays are cat muggets, so same thing with the fawns. Those are all fawn cat muggets. Then there's our white. don't have as much of the white. And then I have the rams. They're not really broken out by color because we don't really, really have active two or three rams we should have. We have more here now because of the lambs, which is fine. And then across in the horizontal rows are the different categories. Um, so I'm going to come in a little closer and shoot that. So this first category is the, we call it the nursing home set. That's actually what I call them. So these are our older ewes that we aren't breeding anymore and just would not thrive if they were to have to move off the farm at this age that they're at. So actually this I see here has for sale. This is because we were putting, we had her available for sale and then we changed our minds and I just never edited the card. And in fact, Genoa is, Rich has said that she still could breed, so I'm gonna move her out of it. And then that's the other thing about using the cards is you can move stuff around and kind of keeps your thoughts organized. The next row is lambs, and our farm policy is that we don't sell lambs in the first year. So we always give the lambs, you lambs I should say, a year to mature so we can sort of see how they are. And the reason for that is because we're breeding to improve. So the lambs are the opportunity to improve and they really, you're not going to know for sure um, right away what they're going to do for your, for your flock. So we We'll keep them for a year, so we're unusual in that way, and but that's our policy. And then the next group is what I call the oh hell no. So these are sheep that just are absolutely going to stay in the flock. These are the stars, the ones that you know have produced for us really well, and that we're for a lot of reasons just are not ready to to move those along. Then there's the group called the maybes. And what puts them in here are things like, well, maybe we just have a lot of their, their genetics, so they are sort of um, duplicating, you know, so that's an opportunity to, to think about moving them along. But there's a bunch of criteria that we um, consider, you know, color is another one, you know, we're trying to expand our black based stuff, the blues or the blacks and the grays. Because it's just that wool is very popular. Um, but anyways, a lot of criteria. So this is my maybe group. And I also have a couple rams in the maybe. And then here's the group of the sheep that I've decided I want to sell. <laughs> and so this is going to be a tricky, difficult um, project. And um, I actually have a very patient customer that's waiting for me to complete this. And... Uh, so I've got to get this done. Once I get my video edited, this will probably be the next thing I sit down and work on. So. so about a year ago, I submitted an article to Spin Off Magazine. They've published a couple of my pieces so far. And this one is about how you take a cat mugget fleece and turn it into a gradient yarn. 
So it's about, you know, you specific taking a fleece from one you and using that natural gradient and converting that into yarn. So I submitted it, like I said, a year ago. I didn't really hear anything. Well, they just emailed me saying they were going to publish it in Springs Edition 2021. And um, so that's pretty awesome. I'm really excited. The thing different this time is they're going to use a studio photographer versus my submitted pictures. So it's going to look really cool. And so they need three things from me. One of them is a skein of my gradient yarn, which I have a few of those I can send easily. And a finished object using the gradient yarn. And there's a, a really talented knitter that I um, have sold quite a bit of yarn to. And she's used some gradient yarns in a couple projects. And she's offered to let me send in one of her things. It's a shawl. And then um, the third thing I need is some locks in the gradient. They wanted to take pictures of that. So I've got to flick up about two ounces of locks in the different shades. So I decided I'm going to use pearl fleece, um, which is great. I rued her last year, so she's got a really nice uh, staple length. It's going to be really nice to spin. And um, so I'm going to be washing that this weekend. It's another one of my tasks. Um, working on. <laughs> There's so many things going on. But anyway, so I'm going to get that done and I'm really excited about the article. So I'll, as I learn more about, you know, what's going on with it and stuff, I'll keep you posted. But it's interesting to me how far ahead they plan for stuff. So, you know, like I have a deadline to get everything to them by September 20th. So it shouldn't be too difficult to, uh, to accomplish. So for the article, I need a fleece that is going to give me a good, you know, a variety of shades. Because the coolest thing about what I write about here is that you can get that gradient effect with a cat mugget fleece because those ewes have the natural gradient on their bodies and you can take advantage of that. So this fleece I'm going to be washing and flicking up enough of the different colored locks to give them something to photograph for the article. But then um, I'm also going to be making some yarn with this. I've got a, actually the girl who I was talking about who's going to donate a finished object. I'm going to make yarn for her out of pearl because she's got sort of an affection for pearl anyway with her history with our flock. And I can't remember the pattern she said she wants to make next. Um, it's color work. I'll have to, I'll make a note of that and add it here. Uh, and Pearl's still so soft. She still has a nice handle. I mean, she's an old girl. She's probably eight. So it's going to be a pleasure. So I'm going to work on getting this washed over the weekend and then start flicking this. And again, like I said, I'll have some for the article. And then once that comes back, I probably will make a gradient yarn. So, so that's, that's what I'm going to be washing this weekend. I'm here with Rich, my husband, and co-owner of Whispering Pines Shetland Sheep. And I asked Rich to join us because um, I wanted to talk about how we use micron data and how a spinner can use micron data um, and so kind of just get started with if you could just give us a little bit of your background your education and what qualifies you to be able to talk at length about micron data i'm not qualified <laughs> <laughs> um my, my background since 1985 is i've worked as a quality engineer i've worked in quality engineering my my whole life um, i'm also a six sigma master black belt so I've done a lot of uh, training and I also train a lot of people in statistics and uh, process improvement um, initiatives. And I think one of the things as a quality professional is I'm always looking to a standard to tell me what, whether something is good or bad. Because like you get data every day and you don't really know, all right, that's great, what does it mean? Um, so once I got into Shetlands, I'm always looking for that standard. And I think um, over the years we finally uh, discovered kind of what we're all about and what the breed is all about. Okay, cool. 
All right, so the first thing I want you to help us with is, let's say you're a hand spinner that is trying to purchase a fleece and you want a super fine fleece, much like what we breed for, and you're buying online. You know, all the shows are canceled right now, so you really can't go out and feel the fleeces. So how would you use Micron data to ensure that you are getting a super fine fleece? I mean, is there a way you can use that data to accomplish that? Of course. I mean, I think that's one of the things as a spinner or a fiber person is you, you want that information. So you should, you should ask for it at all times. So when I looked at a Micron report, so just step back a little bit. Every year we send out our sheep. Uh, we take a sample from the midrib, basically in the middle of the sheep, right in here, and send it to the lab in Texas A&M and they basically measure the fiber diameter of all the fibers in the sample. They measure along the whole length and then they measure, measure the, all the fibers so you get a within fiber and a between fiber uh, readings. And what they're doing is measuring the diameter, but when they measure the diameter, you're going to get back a report and I'll show you on the micron report what it looks like. You're going to get uh, basically raw statistics like these, which is what I really like. But you're also going to get a report that shows a histogram of all the different readings that they took on the, on the sample. So what you're looking for as a hand spinner is the average, obviously. And that's referred to as the AFD. So there's your distribution. But you've got an average fiber diameter, and we got you got some that are very fine, some that are coarse. That's what you want to look for first of all is your average or AFD. That tells you on average how fine your fibers are. But that's not the whole story. You also want to look at the variability, right? So variability is called your standard deviation, and that's the width of the distribution. Well, the standard deviation is not the width of the distribution, but you also want to, it leads you to that information. You want to know how much variability do I have? How wide is that distribution? So in a perfect world that actually does exist, by the way, you want a distribution that looks more like this, like the green curve. It's narrow, not as wide, not as much variability, same average though. I mean, you, you could look at the average of those two fleeces and you'd say they're identical. Well, they're not identical. So when the Texas A&M lab, when they do these samples, how many fibers do they actually test to come up with this distribution? They'll, they'll test, they'll take hundreds of readings. Oh, okay. Because um, they want a you know, good statistical sample of what you sent them. Okay. Now granted, you're sending them only a small portion of the sheep you're just the mid side, so that kind of represents the front, which is always finer, and the back, which is always coarser. But still, it gives you a nice picture of the the, char the character of the fleece, what kind of fleece is it, and what you what you can expect from the whole whole fleece. So the other thing you want to look at when you're talking about fibers, I said, yeah, you want to look at the variability, you want to look at AFD. There is one metric that you should probably look at. It's called the spinning fineness. It's called SF. And that essentially takes a bunch of statistics and it's a calculation. And as a rule of thumb, you want to look at the SF should be finer than your AFD. So on the best fleeces, say you have an AFD of 24 microns, your spinning fineness should be less than 24. It should be 23 microns or whatever. So always look at that. If, you've got a, if you're looking at a fleece and the spinning fineness is greater than AFD, you know you've got, um, so you're going to have some issues with that fleece if you want to use it for next to skin type right. usages. So we're just talking about select using the data for a super fine fleece. There's nothing wrong essentially with anything. Yeah, there are other types that. of Shetland fleeces, and I'll go through some <laughs> of these shortly, that are perfectly fine for other applications, um, and perfectly Shetland for that matter. Um, the last metric I wanted to mention is called the coarse edge mean. It's called CEM. Uh, I think if you look at the average, the spinning fineness, and your coarse edge mean, those are going to kind of tell you a lot of information about that fleece. And there's a lot of statistics. I hate to sell them all short because they're all important. But what the coarse edge mean is, is it takes the average of the 5% of the coarsest fibers. 
So when you look at it, there's another distribution of coarse fibers in every fleece, quite frankly. But in a fine fleece, you should have less. It should be smaller. So the difference between the average of the main fleece, the overall average, and your coarsest 5% should be less than 10, 10 microns. Uh, the reason for that is if you've got um, even a, that's just uh, an extreme example, a 20 micron AFD, but then you're spinning your coarse edge mean or your CEM is 15, that means you've got at least 5% of that fleece is 35 microns. And that's on a really good fleece. Not many fleeces uh, micron at AFD of 20. That's really low for a Shetland. So it's very important to know that. You don't want another distribution of very coarse fibers in there. So you should always ask about the CEM. So what would the, what would, what kind of a fleece would have that type of a distribution? Was that like a dual coated fleece? Yeah, C -E the CEM is also indicative of double coating. Oh. And again, that's, there's nothing wrong with a double coated Shetland fleece um, within reason. Um, historically speaking, uh, you've got some double coating. They call it the beaver coating in, in Shetlands. But that's a different thing than what a lot of the things that we see over in the United States, which is a, a lot longer and a lot more double coated, more like an Icelandic type mm -hmm. fleece. Shetland fleeces should not look like that. And I'll give you some examples here in a minute. Okay. But just, just as a rule of thumb, those are three stats that I think are important that a spinner should ask about. Okay, and I'll put this in the show, the notes um, underneath this video of the numbers that you want to look for if you are specifically trying to find a super fine fleece. Um, all right, so I guess the next thing I want to ask you about is a few years ago, I remember you and a few of the other Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association members sent samples over to Jameson and Smith, specifically to Oliver Henry, to get his evaluation. And I thought that was really interesting and um, wanted to just have you talk about that experience a little bit. And well, first of all, that experience was really cool because um, Oliver Henry, for those of you who don't know, don't know who he is, He's probably the world's most foremost authority on Shetland wool grading. He was the Shetland wool uh, sorter, for lack of a better word, not to insult him with the title, but for 40 years at Jameson and Smith, he was their head wool grader. And he would take the entire clip every year and sort it out into five different grades. So you've got super fine, which is the top grade. You've got fine, good, heavy, and then the worst grade is rough. So he's got five grades to work with, and he tries to sort, not tries, he does sort the fleeces into those, those various grades. Uh, now at Jameson and Smith, only maybe 3% of the clip is, gets the super fine grade. Uh, it's a tough grade to hit, and um, you know. That's what they make their lace weight yarn with, is that right? Yeah, and that goes, as far as I know, I've talked to several people there, and they all said it goes, only goes into their, their lace weight. Uh, yarns. Um, again, there's not that much of it. Only three percent is super fine, so it's their best grade, and that's what you expect to be their uh, finest and softest fleece. You know, we made this chart back when we first started doing the super fine, and we actually used these different um, grades for our wool, but then we kind of got away from it just because everything that we breed now is super fine. So yeah, we that's right? a great point too because originally. I didn't think we were going to be focused on that end of the spectrum. I thought we'd get a little of this, a little of that. But as we as we kind of evolved as a breeder, we kind of focused in on the super fine fleece because yes, in Shetland, maybe only three to three and a half percent of the, the uh, annual clip is super fine. Most of what we have is, in as a flock is super fine because it's the rarest type of Shetland. So I thought, well, if we're going to raise Shetlands, why not raise the rarest kind because certainly you don't want Shetlands are known to be the finest of the British breeds and that goes back to the 1700s and before mm -hmm. that's that's what they they're supposed to be they're supposed to be small fine bone sheep and supposed to be super fine or not super fine necessarily but the finest of all the British breeds that existed back back then so that's what we're trying to preserve here and it's important um, you know we have fine sheep as well fine and super fine is really where we focus but the super fine grade of fleece gives as you know gives you a lot more um, 
features that maybe you're not going to get from other breeds or even other Shetlands. You get greater, um, smaller crimp, finer, it's, uh, the elasticity is greater. And again, I'll show you here in a second. This is, the, this is just a skein of yarn, but you can sort of see the balance and the elasticity of it. Yeah, I mean, that's just not what you see typically in a Shetland. Okay, so anyways, back to the samples we sent to Oliver yeah. and stuff. So I'll just walk through a few of the comments that he made. I unfortunately sent like 20 samples for him to look at. And also, we wouldn't have been able to do this if not for Kelly Bartles at OK Acres Shetlands. Her and Garrett Ramsey were planning a trip to go over there, so they asked if we had any samples we wanted to have graded. So they met with Oliver on one of the days on their trip, and he was, left the samples with them. He was fortunate, or gracious enough to gr make comments about all of them um, and grade them. Okay. So we'll start off with this one. Now, this is not bad Shetland. It's, you can see it's wavier than crampy, but it's still considered crimp. So if you looked against the standard, you would say, all right, it's wavy. It qualifies because it's got some crimp to it. Not very elastic. Um, you stretch it out, it's probably six or seven inches long, fully stretched. You can see the tip. There's a double coating there. So let me just read his comments, then also the statistics that I have on this. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. So it's a 26 AFD, which is not bad at all for a Shetland. So if you only look at that, you'd say, yes, this is exactly what I want. Um, CEM is 13, which again, uh -huh. is not awful, but now you've got a big population of fibers that are 13 microns higher than the 26. So you've got 39 micron fibers in there. And that's significant because once you get at 30 microns, you really, that's what they call the scratch factor, the itch factor, it starts to feel the typical wool scratchiness that people notice. So you want to get most of the fibers below 30 if you can do it. Uh, let's see. So what Oliver's comment was, it's that it's similar to the Shetland rough, uh, rough grade. Um, Which is the coarsest, I guess, of the grades. Yeah, so if he got one of these, a fleece like this in Shetland, he would throw it in the rough bin which only means that there's different applications to, be, to use it for. You can make rugs out of it, you can make uh, pot holders or whatever somebody might make with something. You don't need ultra fine, super fine fleeces. Mm -hmm. You don't need the, the crimp that we would use for yarn and that kind of thing. Right. So nothing wrong with it. Uh, we don't have anything like this in our flock anymore because it's not where our focus is, but certainly nothing wrong with it. Although some people would disagree with me on that comment. All right, the next one, you can see a, quite a difference. So you, right away you can see more crimp, finer crimp, smaller crimp. It's more elastic. It's just a finer fleece. You can feel the, the, the difference. Where this one has more of a, even though it's 26 microns, it has more of a binding twine type feel to it. I would say it feels like more hairy. It, it is, because you got a lot of coarse outer hair on that the first one I showed you. This one does not have that. So what did he say about this one? All right, now interesting enough, this one is actually 27.1 microns. It's higher, really? it's higher in average than the first one that we looked at. <laughs> but when you're trying to make a next to skin quality garment, there's no comparison between those two fleeces. So what else, why is that then? So the CEM is 7.0, that's the big difference right away. So what that tells you is there's a very little outer coat you're, what you're getting is a more consistent fiber. So it says 27.1, but you're getting a more, there's more low fibers, um, low diameter fibers than high fibers in this, in this sample. Um, so what did he say about that? Is the comment that he made? P. Hmm? P. He said super fine, similar to our super fine. So this looks oh. more similar to what he would see in his top grade in Shetland. So is this considered super fine with the Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association standard? No, because 27.1 would be, to be super fine premium in the Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association, you have to be 25 microns or less. Oh, okay. Now, I don't have the spinning fineness, because if your spinning fineness was less than 25, it would qualify 
for, for super fine. Uh, I only have the AFD on my sheet, so I don't know if oh, that would. Okay. And I doubt it's going to be two microns. The SF is going to be two microns less than the AFD, but it, it, it can happen if it's consistent enough. Especially with a CEM of 7.0, it's possible that it would be close to that, but I don't think it would quite qualify as super fine. Okay. So keep in mind, Oliver doesn't have micron data. He's doing all this by hand, and he's judging the character of the fleece, the, the type of fleece it is. If there's a large, coarse outer um, guard hair, he's not going to put it in a super fine group because mm -hmm. it's too many coarse fibers in it. So the next one is um, similar. I mean, it looks similar. It's, it's a little bit finer. You can see finer crimp, it's more, even more elastic. Um, if you really want the elasticity in your yarns, you know, like for making sweaters or things that really you want that type of elastic, you've got to have the finer crimp like this. It's the only way you're going to get it. All right, so the length is approximately the same as the last one we looked at. And I'll just read the comments he made. 23.5 AFD, first of all, that's, we tested this, he didn't, he just graded it. So AFD of 23.5, CEM of 7.3, so almost the same as the last one we looked at. Um, he called this super fine plus, oh, really? which obviously isn't a real grade, so he's just being polite to us. Uh, by saying nice comments. Um, what he said is he's never seen Shetland as fine as this, as a denser crimp. And what he's saying is that it's a very tight and small crimp, uh, tightly packed, in other words, not loose and wavy like the first sample that we looked at. So that was it was nice of him to say that. Um, yeah, definitely. And again, we have the benefit of the fiber uh, micron results that he did not have. All right, so F is, again, it's gonna be similar to the last one. You can see it's a little different. You don't see quite as fine a crimp, but it is very elastic. I like the other one better. The yeah. One before. Um, Although this has got nice length to it. So that AFD is 26.1, which interesting enough is the same as the very first one that we looked at that was more double coated. Oh. Uh, CEM 7.4. Super fine plus again is how he graded it. And it says finer than our super fine. So that's just a few examples of, of kind of what Oliver thought of some of these fleeces. And I've got a bunch of comments on a bunch of different ones that I sent in. Now keep in mind when he judges, not judges, when he grades fleeces, he is a judge as well. But he's looking at the whole fleece, not just a staple like we're giving him. So it's grossly unfair to ask him to put a grade on something that's so small such a small sample right. so he can only look at that and say well based on what i'm seeing this is what i like how i would grade it if he looked at the whole fleece he might look at it differently right so one thing i wanted to say when i sell raw fleeces i provide the micron data i take four of the different pieces of information we collect and i think that from what you just said i probably should add coarse edge mean on here because i don't really provide that information like on my Etsy shop and stuff. So should I put that in there? Right now I'm putting in the AFD standard deviation, which you talked about those two, spinning fineness I put in there. Yeah, I mean, you really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, there's a reason for that though, because there are other metrics, like I said, there are other statistics on the report that really can give you the same information. I'm just, I just wanted to focus on three you could narrow it down to. You've got the coefficient of variation, which you do put on there. You do put the standard devi deviation on there, but usually when I start talking about standard deviation, that's when people's eyes roll to the back of their head. Yeah. Um, but I could certainly do a future episode on that. If, if, if yeah, I think that would be great. I think that would be really great. Um, but it's an introduction anyways. Here's some high level useful statistics that people can use okay but yeah the ones you have on the sheet are the right ones it's just that you know you don't want to put the whole micron report on no, there it's a little overwhelming um all right well i think that um one thing i am going to do too i made a note here i'm going to put a link to the texas a m website so if you want to go on their site they probably have information about the service they provide and then um I also, there was a really cool video I've seen recently of Oliver Henry doing a sort of fleeces, and I'll put a link to that in the bottom here in the show notes as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to ask you, Rich, when you got the package back with Oliver's handwritten notes, I mean, you saw his writing and everything, I mean, how did you 
What was your reaction? How did you feel reading all that? I wept openly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously this guy's, you know, the top wool grader in the world. And, you know, it's not, I've never met him. So it's disappointing I haven't met him. But, you know, lacking that, just seeing his handwritten notes and comments about, you know, something that we raised was, was pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so it was an honor to have him do this, and I was grateful that he, he did that. And someday, hopefully, I'll get a chance to thank him for doing that. Yeah, I hope so, too. All right, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>Okay, the other thing I would need to do is some, um, I was asked to look at a fleece for a potential fleece buyer. So I'm going to do that now. And I, I really wanted to look at Cora's wool because I like the length on her and I like the density and I just feel like it would be a really good fleece for somebody. I'm gonna forget where those are when I need them but whatever. All right so this is Cora's fleece and I didn't I don't have her card with all the data I just really kind of want to look at it. So I'm looking at the cut side not seeing any second cuts which is why I'm offering it for sale is a raw fleece not seeing any scurf She's just a good old reliable you, Cora. Named after the uh, Downton Abbey. What is she, the Duchess of Grantham? I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, it's just really nice. So she's a fawn cat mugget, but she doesn't have very much dark. I might have skirted it, but I do know that she is quite light. This is her neck here. And I just, I like the length for this particular customer. She's a new spinner and she wants to try processing a raw fleece and I just feel like this one will be nice. And the other reason I like this one for her is it is fine. It's super fine. But she's gonna spin from the lock and I just feel like this will give her a really good experience. So that's a strong contender. Put that back in the bag. Then I want to also look at Mrs. Patmore. Let's see what I like about that one. I love doing this. Where is my rag? Well, there's so much to do. I just looked over there. I've got things I want to organize. Oh, and it's all stuff I love to do, too. So I've started full-time farming since January. And we've always had sheep and stuff, but I've never really, the last time I was home, not working, I took seven years off and that's when the boys were younger. So I was really home to be a stay-at-home mom. So I was running them and soccer and 4-H and everything. So I wasn't really dedicated to farming. So now I'm really 100% doing it. and. Gosh, it's just, there's, you're always working. I get up at six and I'm working and I don't stop ever. Even like at night, I'm working the computer, emails, putting stuff up on the shop. It's just like constant work. And I love it all. I wish that I had more time in the day to work more. Okay, I'm also really liking this one this is the wow this is the fleece that she said she was interested in and oh, I'm think I'm thinking that this is gonna be a good one for her and I like the idea that it's got the darker a lot of dark okay my recollection of this fleece being short was being oh my goodness 
Oh, that's why, because it's Mira Reed. Okay, so maybe this is the one I want her to, but she just, she already bought yarn from this U. Oh boy. So another thing I'm working on is putting together a list of sheep to sell. And the second list that we do at the end of summer is so much harder because there's nothing that I want to sell right now. Everything in the flock is so nice. And I had her on the list, but I just think I'm going to take her off. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, well, this one is spectacular. Nice ends, nice cut ends. <sighs> really nice. This one, I, I've spun in Mirror Reed two years, and it's really fun to spin. Rosamond is really nice, too. Okay, let's look at Mrs. Patmore. Mrs. Patmore is a smaller fleece. Just seeing like really nice cut ends. Just validating my decision to sell this as a raw fleece. seeing what I'm seeing this is just oh, man it's nice as well it's really nice you know I um don't usually get to process my fleeces that I've put up for sale normally I'll do the stuff that it got had a bad shearing experience, so maybe it was a little more chopped up or, you know, hit the rise, and so it's just not something I'm proud to sell. But, and so whenever I'm looking at one of these fleeces, I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, the lucky person that's gonna get to process this. They're all, I don't, I don't think I would discourage a new spinner who's going to be processing a fleece from taking any of these. They're all really nice. Yeah. I stand behind it. It's a nice little fleece. And it's got a little bit of dark, darker bits. I kind of took it easy on the skirting on some of these, but I mean, once you flick that, it, there's a lot of wool here on this tip that would straighten right out. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm happy with all three of these. Let's look at Rosamond just for the fun of it. Hmm, it smells so good. So vanilla pipe. <laughs> That's what a sulfur spinner that she thinks the smell is. And I get it. I can smell it. Let's, look at, let's just look at Rosamond, shall we? Yes. Oh my gosh. Just a great, dense, clean. I have yarn for this used fleece last year. For whatever reason, I was able to process it. I don't know what happened, why it didn't make the cut for a raw fleece. Could be too that it just never sold, and so sometimes at the end of the year when it's time to shear, I get to I get to spin up the stuff that's still on the shelf. So with Rosamond, you're gonna get a lot of really interesting dark 
for like if you want to do a gradient or maybe do different a couple skeins in different colors for stripes you get that with the same U fleece so that's cool it's very nice it's good really crimpy but lots of bounce they all have a lot of bounce and crimp so not really distinguishing characteristics any longer with our stuff. So my uh, advice to this newbie spinner that's processing uh, raw fleece for the first time is any of them. <laughs> They're all wonderful. Mm. Oh, I wish I could... All right, so it's nighttime. <laughs> Chores. The first thing I do is get everybody out of the barn. <laughs> My bottle lamps are butting me with their noses, thinking that I'm a source of milk. Come on. So we've done this four nights, so now they know the drill. I just don't like them in the barn when I'm putting down the, the hay because they really can get out of hand. Except for these little spoiled brats. You guys get to stay in here. Right? So now we just get electrolytes twice a day. So yeah, you'll see the lambs and some of the adults are coated and that's because we had to introduce hay into their feed routine because the pastures just aren't coming back good enough with all the heat and the lack of rain. And are we doing a little circle dance here, girls? So we had to put the coats on a little bit early this year, which I don't... matter. I've got to have a pretty firm grip on this bottle because they're pretty aggressive now. I'm going to go flying if I'm not holding on really tight. So I've already fed the rams. All I have to do is put hay down, refresh their water, and then that'll be it for the night. I started a new crew of lambs this morning for halto training. So that was interesting. They did all right. It's hard. Okay, that's done. Okay, let's get some hay. I'm giving them a bale and a half right now. Before lambs were here, it was a bale, but because of the lambs, they've added the numbers. And I like the little lammies. My babies have a chance to have some hay before everybody comes in here and pushes them around. Right, little stinkies? Thank you. 
Get off of the hay. So yeah, you can see all the lambs got coats on. And that lamb's got her legs stuck in the coat. I'll have to take care of that. There's Genoa. Genoa. Don't know why I called her Genoa. Mrs. Hughes' this little girl. Oops, sorry. There's Freya. So I didn't coat the rams, the ram lambs. We just don't coat our rams. The ram's got nice straight legs. Hey, fella. Guys, you're eating so fast. That is Ophabia's ewe lamb. Oh no, it's Mrs. Hughes's lamb. I always get those two mixed up. Here's Dina. I just put the, oh! Well, that's what you get. The little one nudged her out of the way. I don't have anything for you. Now go, go eat your hay. Get your poopy butt away from me. So there's Dina. She just got her coat today because she was kind of getting dirty. So use that uh, rude. So there's one right there. I think that's Mrs. Hughes. She was right down to her skin, rude. So she's got a little time before she needs a coat. Smells good. Is Yuki. I just got a coat on her today. I'm actually carting her fleece right now. You're so soft, aren't ya? There's Mrs. Hughes. She was rude also.
I love this little pond cat mug at land. This is Ear. She's a yearling. This is another yearling. Probably, probably Frig. She's really nice. There's Brienne. Miracle, she's not yelling. How'd you like getting halter trained today? Did you like it, my little princess? I think this is um, Baxter's ram. She had two black rams. This is the one that doesn't have any spots or anything. Golly, rough crowd. Something to drink? It is so she. So put the coats on the lambs and the yearlings, because all the yearlings they root before lambing, so their fleeces were starting to get longer and catching more hay. I don't know who that one is. 1254. It's probably one of my dowager, or my down heavy. the lights and I'm going to say goodnight. Why are you laying down? <laughs> Silly. See how they eat over top of each other? That's how the hay gets in the back of their wool. As you can see there, that's why the neck wool's never very clean. Alright, good night.